near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the New Mutants Omnibus Volume 3 from Marvel Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. Now, before getting started, I do want to thank David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on December 26th or 27th, depending on where you get your books. So, after Christmas is when this is coming out. But it is finally coming out. What we're looking at here is the standard edition cover. On the left-hand side is your direct market cover. And that one is supplied by John Byrne. And you can probably tell, of course, that there are two different designs for the spines. But everything else underneath the dust jacket is identical. So we will shift the focus to this cover right here, where we have the New Mutants. And if you're wondering why I decided to choose this cover instead of the John Byrne cover, because I love John Byrne, I don't know, it's just something really special about this era of New Mutants. I, I was a big fan of this, and this, to me, symbolizes that Brett Blevins and Louis Simonson era. So we have the kids here. We have Dan Loonstar and Warlock and Cannonball and Magic and Sunspot leaving Birdbrain and all his friends from probably one of the biggest storylines that happens to the New Mutants in this very omnibus. And the design of the spine with Dark Child down there is absolutely beautiful because it matches the other two Omnis. As a matter of fact, here they are together. And of course, by now the logo has changed and that's why it looks different. And hopefully one day we will have a volume four wrapping up the series. And then the back of the book, Turmoil and Tragedy. It's exactly what this is. Uh, what it's collecting in here. And then the price of the book, $125 with the ISBN. And I love this right here this almost i think i might have said it in my first omnibus overview said it kind of reminds me of like an 80s yearbook design i don't know it's just something cool I, I i dig that now let's look at the flaps here so you have from the horror of limbo to the glory of asgard and then the creators you have louis simonson brett blevins john bogdanove and terry schumacher as the some of the people behind the book and then a little bit about the characters and what's going on through this era plus i love these designs these were originally designed by arthur adams but brett blevins makes it his own and then we have this nice picture of rain and doug right here underneath the dust jacket we do have this image really interesting of the new mutants by arthur adams even sean making an appearance in magma there and this is of course the same design that's on the dust jacket i think they tend to put the design that's underneath the dust jacket it's the same design as that of the standard edition at least from some of the omnis that i've seen and then the back this looks like the cover of honestly the first new mutants epic if i'm not mistaken which was a big gap filler and i'm gonna be talking about what's collected in here in a little bit but i will say for people that are completists and have like the oversized hardcovers or when they were reprinted as omnis if you have the x-men let's zoom in a little bit here uh, Fall of the Mutants, the prologue to Inferno, and then the X-Men Inferno omnibus, you're going to have a lot of the stories that are collected in this particular omnibus, already in oversized format. And I'll go more into detail when we open up the book, uh, but we're basically going from 55 to 73 collected in those three omnis, or oversized hardcovers if you have them, uh, compared to this, which is 55 through 85. Uh, but more on that here in a little bit. Let's uh, let's go ahead and open up the book. Minor spoilers looking at this. Uh, my favorite story probably collected in here. I can't even talk about because the title and even the cover will give it away. Uh, but man, it's a good one. So we're looking at the Louis Simonson era of the New Mutants. Let's go ahead and crack it open. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this volume three open. We have these yellow... And sheets, which were the sh 
sheets that they used for volumes one and two and the frames of course and the new mutants logo and then the credits right here louis simonson chris claremont terry austin michael higgins mark grunwald and sue flaxman and then of course the pencilers brett blevins june brigman uh, terry schumacher louise williams and rich buckler john byrne and then your inkers terry austin john j muth carl potts and of course other pencilers and inkers colorists is glennis oliver and bill ray christy Scheel, and others and then we have the letters right here tom ozerwashki and then ken lopez joe rosen and others and then your assistant editors and here is your table of contents again with this design on the back with a yellow frame what's collected in here what year and month it originally came out so we'll be looking at the mapping here in a second so kicking it off with issue number 55 in this particular frame louise simonson and brett blevins this is the era of wheezy as we call her but don't call her wheezy and this is collecting new mutants number 55 through 85 and annual number four spellbound number four i love that that's in here power pack number 40 uncanny x-men 231 and exterminators one through four and then material for marvel comics presents number 22 marvel fanfare number 55 and marvel superheroes number one and the x-men odd men out one shot the book has 1136 pages now, I said I would talk a little bit about the mapping when I opened up the book. So, pretty much, issues number 55 all the way to the end of Inferno, which is issue of uh, number 73, and Exterminators 1 through 4, and of course Uncanny X-Men, have been collected already in those Omnis and oversized hardcovers that I mentioned. So really for the first time this is collecting issues 74 to 85 if you have those in an oversized format of course spellbound and then annual number four will be complete not just material from uh new mutants will be in here and then of course the marvel comics presents and the marvel fanfare and marvel superheroes number one and the x-men odd man out one shot those will be collected in here in an oversized format so it's just for the people that have those and don't like to double dip that much. That is something to think about. There is a epic collection that collects those missing issues, like issues 71 through 85, um, and then Exterminators 1 through 4. This is one of the early... I think this is the first epic collection, if I'm not mistaken, of New Mutants. Uh, but, you know, if you're an omnibus or oversized hardcover collector, you're probably like, get that the hell out of this. <laughs> Shocked. Uh, so we'll focus back on this. Uh, so we have the return of Lila Cheney and her relationship with Sam Guthrie. And again, I'm going to be talking about some minor spoilers, pretty much the things that happened before. This is the June Brigman issue right here. And the New Mutants are going through changes, not just the creative team changes, because this is after the events of the Mutant Massacre, which kind of matured them a little bit, even though it didn't impact them that much. They're in their graduation costumes. So it's the ones that were designed by Arthur Adams. The Hellions make a return. And we also have the introduction of this new character named Birdbrain. And where Birdbrain ends up taking them will change the team for a long time. Now, this is also during the era when Magneto was the headmaster of the Xavier School for the Gifted Youngsters. So he's leading them in the best way possible. He's not quite Professor X, but he's also not quite evil Magneto trying to rule the world. It's more of him just trying to do the right thing and also carry on the legacy of what Xavier wanted to do. He plays a big role in this, more so than the stories in X-Men, uh, he, because he is the schoolmaster. And then we get into the fall of the mutants, where we learn the origin of Birdbrain, where Birdbrain takes them back to... Uh, <laughs> their island that is filled with other anthropomorphic animals. And we have this one particular character named the Animator that is there and doing experiments on them. And he has close ties to the Hand, who were... Not the Hand, I'm sorry, the Right. I don't know why I always call them the Hand. 
Oh, because I always wanted the hand and the right to team up to be called the right hand. Did anybody else do that? No? No? Yeah, me neither. I swear. I didn't I didn't do that either when I was a kid. Um, but he used to be part of the right, which of course was Cameron Hodge and those smiley face uh, robotic suits that appeared in the pages of X-Factor. So that plays a big role in this. And unfortunately, one of the New Mutants ends up getting killed in that mission. And you can find out who by reading the book. But it forever changes the status quo of the New Mutants and how they see missions. And it was really interesting. Because uh, I'm not going to go into spoilers, but I am going to talk a little bit about the behind the scenes. It was a matter of the writer, Louis Simonson, just not knowing exactly what to do with this particular character. It seemed like a jokey type of character that really didn't add much to the team dynamic. So she said, why don't we just kill him? Like, show how big the Fall of the Mutants big crossover was. Now, the important thing to note about the New Mutants, Fall of the Mutants crossover is that it really doesn't have big ties to what was going on in the X-Men or what was going on in X-Factor. X Factor was dealing with their own thing, fighting Apocalypse. The New Mutants, or I'm sorry, the X Men were doing their own thing, fighting the adversary. And then the New Mutants were, of course, helping Birdbrain and Birdbrain's friends fight off against the Animator. And of course, unfortunately, there was a heavy cost to that. Map Perfectly is Spellbound number four. If you ever watched our Map My X, where we talk about possible mapping for Omnis, we. Peter fought tooth and nail to have this thrown in an omnibus. And I was like, really doesn't need to be in there. I know it features them, but it's in here in its entirety. So all of Spellbound for the first time collected in an oversized format. And then we jump back to the New Mutants with a really cool issue. I love this particular issue because it works as a flashback type of issue with Kitty Pride and her closeness to Ileana Rasputin magic. And it's a throwback to issue number 21 of New Mutants uh, with Warlock when he made an appearance. And it was when Magic left for a little while and she came back with this armor. This is the story of how or where she went, rather. So we'll go ahead and keep going through here. Now, it is important to note that something big happens in the pages of X-Men. And I'm not going to go big into spoilers here because I want people to be surprised or read it for the first time. But during Fall of the Mutants, there is something huge that happens in the pages of X-Men. And Ileana kind of snaps and blames the character of Forge for what ended up happening to the X-Men, particularly her brother Colossus. So she goes after him, even though the New Mutants are like, what are you doing? This can't happen. So she challenges him to a duel. And of course... Forge is one of my favorite characters. I don't know how anybody else felt about the character. Uh, long before Life Death and long before anything going on in Krakoa, I really was intrigued by that character. I love the fact that he's a mutant. He's, you know, he's the maker. He can make things out of nothing. And he also has these indigenous people type of powers. And I thought that was really cool. That added a lot more mystique, is that the right word, to the character. And ironically enough, later on, he was with Mystique and Destiny for a while when the X-Men disappeared and went into the Outback era. Here's the Power Pack issue. I love the mapping in this book. It is freaking perfect. This is the issue 231 of Uncanny X-Men, which shows a wonderful reunion between Colossus and magic i love this this is all drawn by rick leonardi and this one is inked by the legendary dan green who we lost earlier this year but it's just a wonderful issue that features both colossus and iliana and then we have issue number four of the annual right here which has the high oh actually this is during the high evolutionary war and it features a couple characters from Louis Simonson's run on X Factor. And we have the backup stories all in here. And there's the high evolutionary part. And then we jump back into New Mutants. So issue 231 of Uncanny X-Men takes place immediately right after the events of New Mutants number 66. And then after that is where they decide to put in the annual. That's the way I would have mapped this. That's 
beautiful. And then issue 67. So even if you own the stuff, like, even if you have, like, the X-Men Inferno prologue and X-Men Inferno omnibus and, the, of course, the Fall of the Mutants, like I said, it, it does double dip. Uh, but if you're just interesting in following the adventures of the New Mutants and you're getting just the uncanny and chronological order skipping the event omnis, then this is going to be a great surprise. A lot of this stuff is going to be new to you. Man, I love this particular era. How Ileana just gets darker and darker to eventually becoming... Well, I said something about Dark Child. And all of that, of course, leading into Inferno. But before we get to Inferno, we get Casimir that shows up here. And all the boys are fighting over her. The girls are jealous of her. And it's that really her ability. Uh, Magneto, again, trying to keep his team or his students rather not really his team he doesn't really see them as a team together while also dealing with the hellfire club because during this time he's also a member of the hellfire club not not really e like evil evil like during the dark phoenix saga but they're still scheming and doing things that magneto doesn't agree with that's why he feels like it's really important oh, such an awesome issue right here because this is the exterminators um it is all written by louis simonson and it is drawn by John Bogdanove. But I love that Gaines is in here as a little cameo. And he's reading Tales from the Crypt. Such a nice touch. I love it. Uh, but this is... Oh man, it's dark. If you've never read this era of Inferno, like it looks kitty, And you're like, oh, okay, yeah. Kids are being kidnapped. In order for Inferno to begin, they have to sacrifice children. They have to sacrifice babies. That is dark for a comic book that was coming out in the late 80s. Like, especially with X-Men. Especially, you know, featuring kids like Artie and Leech from the pages of X-Factor. And then this also introduces us to Whisk Kid, who now plays a big part. Rusty and Skids and Richter end up uh, playing a part in this. But more importantly, Boom Boom. And then they will shift over to the New Mutants, leaving the pages of X-Factor. And that's all in the events of... Inferno. So these four issues help kick off Inferno. Now, what's not in here are the uncanny issues of Inferno and the X Factor issues of Inferno. Those are not included in here. And I agree with that mapping because what's important are the issues of New Mutants. Because during this time, it's this whole battle for Limbo and Ileana gets her friends involved and they all go after sim and it's such an awesome storyline and after this there's a change in the status quo too so let's skip a little bit through here but it's just wonderful artwork again by brett blevins and then we head over to issue number 74 where we're gonna have some new characters that end up joining them because like i said there's a status quo change so most of the characters after inferno much of them uh, you know, most of them are kids like Artie and leech what were you going to do with these teenage characters like Boom Boom and Richter and Rusty and Skids? Well, they're going to end up joining the New Mutants. And then there's a whole internal fight in the Hellfire Club, which is what that cover to the New Mutants direct market is. It comes from issue number 76, this one right here. Or 75. Oh my gosh, someone take my geek badge away from me. 75. Now, anything after 73, like I mentioned, it has not been collected in oversized format. It has been collected in epic format. So, this is the John Byrne fill-in issue with Bob McCloud on artwork. Showcasing what is going on with Magneto and what it's going to mean for the kids. If he's the headmaster of the school, what... If he goes bad, or if he ends up staying with the Hellfire Club, what could it mean for them? And then we end this particular omnibus with the saga of Danny Moonstar and the Asgardian world. And also known as the Curse of the Valkyrie. So she is called back to Asgard. Now, not every New Mutant ends up going there. Some of them stay here on Earth and end up fighting the Freedom Force. But some of the team does end up going to Asgard. And that is the, that's the last arc that's collected through here. There is like one or two fill-in issues, but for the most part, it's just the New Mutants hanging out in Asgard and wrapping up Brett Blevinson's run on New Mutants before somebody else that you may be familiar with, and I'll show you what the cover looks like. 
takes over the book, and that is, of course, Rob Liefeld, who provides the covers, this is inked by Todd McFarlane, for issues 85 and then, of course, 86, because 86 being his first issue. Now, there are a lot of important things that happen in 85, 80, or, I'm sorry, 86, 87, and all the way to 100, such as the shift in tone of the book, and that's another story. That's for a volume four that we might get, hopefully, one day to wrap up this particular series. And take us all the way to X-Force. Uh, but this is the last issue with Brett Blevins. But not before he fully, truly leaves the book. He does another special. And then after that, we get the Marvel Comics Presents issue. And then after issue number 85 is where we get the Marvel Comics Presents issue. Or material from the Marvel Comics Presents issue number 22. That featured Daniel Moonstar and Rain. And also... This is the Marvel Superhero Special that features Magic, An Untold Tale of Magic by Sue Flaxman and Rodney Ramos. And then we get the Marvel Fanfare issue number 55, or material from there. And that is a comic book that was supposed to come out shortly after New Mutants number 66, but it was published in between issues 98 and 99 of New Mutants. But I'm glad that they brought it back to this omnibus to collect it here and this is collected for the first time in an oversized format and then we get something really special here this is x-men odd man out which was a tribute to dave cockrum and what's collected in here are two previously unpublished inventory stories so stories that they kept in the vault in case they were running like close to a deadline and they needed something in there but for the first time, this is now published here. And this occurs, why it's here, right before or right after issues number 76. And this is all drawn by Dave Cockrum. I think these were, or these originally were drawn, I think it states here actually, drawn circa 1989 to 1990. And occurs shortly, yeah, after New Mutants number 76. But these were all drawn by Dave Cockrum. I love that they included those in here. Then we get the extras, like the Marvel Age extra right here, the Fall of the Mutants that's happening. So these are interviews, and if you saw my overview of the Marvel Age, you know what that's about. It's kind of the behind-the-scenes look at things that were happening at Marvel Comics. Yes! I love these. The Registration Act. Long before there was this Marvel Civil War, there was the Mutant Registration Act. I think they were called the Superhero Registration Act in the Civil War, but this is the Mutant Registration Act. And then the connecting covers right here of New Mutants issues number 59 through 60. Or 61, sorry. Always love that cover. Which they actually used as the spine for one of the... Or no, or did they use for a direct market cover? I've announced so much, I can't remember. The Evolutionary War uh, house ad right here. Before we even knew what it was. The Inferno house ads. Oh my gosh. For Inferno to begin, 13 children must die. How dark is that? Man, that's freaking crazy. Uh, I love Inferno. This is the Magic, Ileana Magic and Dark Child promo right here. And this, Marvel Portraits of a Universe number 4 from 1995. It's a pinup. New Mutants and Inferno by Brett Blevins. And the commentary here is by Scott Lobdell. Promotional art by Brett Blevins here. I think that's... What Gossamere was originally designed to look like. Oh my god, look at that beautiful picture by Colleen Doran from Marvel Fanfare. And then issue number 45 right here by, of course, Bill Sienkiewicz featuring Magic down there. Marvel Fanfare number 45 pinup by Terry Schumacher and Christy Scheel. Oh, there, there's something special about Brett Blevins' art with John Bogdanove. I don't know what it was, but I really like both of them together. So you have John Bogdanove and Brett Blevins. It's it's a very cartoony look. I And I remember when I was reading this, a lot of my friends that were getting New Mutants were turned off. They did not like it. And I know it's, it's a different era, right? But back then, when Rob Liefeld took over the book, it was night and day to a lot of my friends. They were like, oh my gosh, Omar, have you read New Mutants? Do you know what they're doing? It's Brett, that, that cartoony guy, Brett Blevins, whose art I really enjoyed is off the book, and there's a new guy, Rob Lay... I think they... How did they pronounce his name? It was something like Leifeld? Leifeld? Or something like... It wasn't Leifeld, right? Like... Because, well, that guy went on to blow up and co-create some characters. Uh, but this is the handbook stuff here. And then, of course, the cover here by Carl Potts. 
I don't know if many of you know that Carl Potts comes from an advertisement or advertising background. So it's really cool to see him become editor and then become a writer, but also a pencil or inker and doing things like that. That is beautiful. The exterminators who ended up, most of them joining the new movie. Look at the pants, man. Those late 80s, early 90s, dude. That's what Stalin was. And original artwork here from Brett Blevins. Cover there by Rick Leonardi, Rich Buckler with Bob McCloud. And then the Fall of the Mutants trade paperback cover, the Epic Collection. Which is interesting that they put that in the back here. The recolors or the new colors on the Epic Collection. And then the back of the book from All New X-Men number 20. That's what it was from. The X-Men 50th Anniversary variant. That's really interesting that they put that as the art on board in the front here. All right, let's look at the binding and then talk about the build and the paper stock. 1136 pages is what this book contains. And this is what the binding looks like. It is sewn binding and what the eye looks like. Now we've seen bigger, mainly because we've had that mega printer books. We've, I've done a lot of overviews of mega printer books, uh, but this is printed at the iMac. So not that big of an eye. And during this time, there wasn't like a lot of spread pages, but you know, it does help lay the book over. Now I wanted to come back to this page so we can look at the way the book lays over. We're on page 26 and also the type of bleed through on light paper or light colors here. Uh, very minimal. Paper stock seems like honestly as thick as the mega printer. Uh, but there is some bleed through happening, especially on the white. More so than the mega print paper stock that they use. I'm not a paper thickness expert. Never claim to be. It's just what I feel because I've been reading these books. What's missing from this though, since this is an iMac printer, is that dirt feel that I've felt in some iMac printers, but not in a while. Yeah, it's missing from this entirely. Like I don't, I don't feel any of that dust or whatever it might be, uh, but just a little bit of a bleed through that's happening whenever there's whites or whenever there's light colors. But that, as they say, is that, man, that brought back some memories. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up. If you already have the Fall of the Mutants and the Inferno Prologue and Inferno, if you're going to pass up on this one, or if you're just getting new mutants, or I guess if you're getting it all. I would love to know all those comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Everybody, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.